Hello, I'm Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day in the Word, and today is the fifth Sunday of Easter. As you know, on uh, our weekday uh, versions of Day by Day in the Word, I've been going through the Acts of the Apostles, but on Sunday we normally stick with the Gospel. Uh, Often the uh, Acts of the Apostles reading on Sunday is either the same as or uh, redundant to the Acts readings that we have during the week, and the same is true for today. So we are going to be uh, using our gospel uh, reading from John chapter 14 uh, for our uh, study today, our reflection. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own. The Father Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we are back in the upper room again this week. And we have Jesus' uh, discourse at the Last Supper where he begins to uh, uh, kind of uh, prepare his disciples and especially his apostles for the things that are going to be coming both immediately in the future and in the far future. And, uh, you know, he has shared some some discouraging and discomforting words uh, before this. Uh, Of course, this was just after he had talked about the new commandment in his love, and that was wonderful. Uh, But it was also the time where he told Peter that Peter was going to betray him. So it was out of this that he, again, changes back from telling Peter that, uh, you know, you're going to betray me. You're going to deny me three times. And he immediately goes into this discourse, and he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. And I know he was speaking not just to Peter, but to so many, because if, if Peter was going to betray well, what about the rest of them? Are the, are, are, they knew how strong Peter was. What would happen for them during this time of, intre- of intensity that they're about to encounter? He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God. And it was really like an exhortation. It wasn't just you have faith in God, but have faith in God. Have faith in me also. He's really encouraging and challenging them. And one of the things that's interesting at this point is that he now takes them from where they are and he projects himself into the far future. One of the few times in John's gospel that we have Jesus talking about eternity and his coming again. And he says, in my father's house, there are many dwelling places. In other words, there's a place where we are all going to have plenty of room to spend eternity. And I'm going to prepare a place for you there but I'm also going to come again and take you to where I am. So 
So he is now taking them and projecting them even beyond what's going to happen in this world and project to them what's going to be happening later on as they enter in to eternal life. And it's at this point that he says, you know, I'm going to go there. I'm, I'm going there. And uh, you know the way. And at this point, Thomas is just really flabbergasted. Lord, we don't know where you're going. How are we going to know the way? And this is where Jesus utters the words that are probably uh, uh, one of the most popular little nuggets from John's gospel. It is something that we've heard over and over and over again over the centuries as a word that culminates uh, in, in terms of expl expressing who Jesus is and why he came. How can we know the way? Thomas says, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. So one of the things we see here is that Thomas was looking for a map, but Jesus was saying to him, you don't need a map. You just need a man. I'm the man. Follow me. I am the way. If you just stay with what I'm teaching, stay with where I'm going, you will find your way to where I want you to go. So I am the way to, to, to this place that, that I'm talking about. But not only that, I am the truth. In other words, I am the truth about that place and about God. So not only am I the way, but I am the truth. And then he says, and I'm also the life. And uh, one of the things we see here is that, that Jesus uses, uh, uh, and, and Luke encapsulate it, encapsulates it in a Greek word, zoe. Now, there's two Greek words that are used in the New Testament for life. One is bios, where we talk about biological life. And I think I exp uh, talked about this the other day in, in one of my reflections. But biological life, where I'm, you know, my heart is beating, blood is uh, going through my veins and my arteries, and, uh, you know, my brain is functioning, all the organs in my body are working. That's biological life. But there's another word for life, zoe. And zoe is talking about the life that is to be lived, life that is lived according to the intentions of the creator of all life. And, and that's the word zoe. It's a qualitative term. And that's the word that Jesus is using here. I am the way to eternity. To eternity. I am the truth of, of who it is that we are going to be going toward and I am also the life. I am the, the means through which you can live your life here so as to fulfill being a part of that eternal life with God. So Jesus said, I'm all sufficient. I am all that you need to find your way to heaven. And as he said, no one comes to the Father except through me, that he is the way that we get to the Father. And not only is he the way to get to the Father in eternity, but he's the way to get to the Father even in our prayers. You, you know, when we pray, we always pray in the name of Jesus. And that's because he is the way that we have to bring our prayers to God. And, um, you know, then he goes on and, and talks about the Father a little bit. And this is where Philip gets involved. He says, we want to see the Father. We want to have the, the word there uh, uh, for what he's looking for is the word theophany and manifestation of God. And Jesus said, look, I am the manifestation. I'm the theophany. I'm the one. If you've seen me, you've seen God the Father. He and I are the same. We are one. And this is an introduction, again, into Trinitarian thought that, that I am the, in the Father and the Father is in me. We are one together. And then uh, later on, he says at the very end of our passage, amen, amen, I say to you. Now, whenever he, you, you hear this, uh, amen, amen, in another uh, translation, you might hear the words, verily, verily, I say to you. So truly, truly, I am saying to you. When you hear it said doubly, amen, amen, pay attention. This is important stuff that we are to get into our hearts and our minds. And it's right after that he says, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. Now, one of the things that we'll see is that the apostolic company, after the death and resurrection and ascension of Jesus, goes out uh, and uh, does the same things that Jesus does. 
But he says they're going to do greater things. Now, are they going to do greater in quality? Obviously not. I mean, what Jesus did was perfect. But they're going to do it in greater magnitude by the very nature of the fact that Jesus multiplies himself exponentially in every apostle, every disciple, and then later on through history, every bishop, priest, deacon, every layman, that God's uh, power and presence and working is manifested in exponential manner throughout the whole world in greater measure is what he's talking about here. And that's going to happen because he's going to be going to the Father. And he's now going to begin introducing them to the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, the one who will come and actually reproduce in them and through them the very works of Jesus. So what a powerful passage here in the upper room. They have yet to encounter uh, this passion that they are going to see Jesus go through. They have yet to encounter his crucifixion where all will scatter except one. John will remain uh, with Jesus and Mary. And they have yet to encounter his resurrection. But he's preparing them that when he goes to the Father, they're not going to be left alone, but an advocate will come. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. These particular chapters of John, particularly John chapters 13, 14, and 15, uh, and on into 16 and 17, uh, my favorite part of the Gospels, by all means. It's, it's my favorite part. These, this is the last and will and testament of Jesus, his last teachings, his last words to his apostles and his disciples. We need to really camp here and take into ourselves what our Lord is wanting to tell us. So until tomorrow, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.